Hello everyone and welcome to Juan Between the Pages, my name is Juan and in today's video we are going to discuss the monarch of LGBTQ stories. No pun intended, because red, white and royal blue, crown, monarchs, Prince Henry. Today we are going to talk about three books that were published by Casey McQuinston. If you are not familiar with them, they are a queer author from Louisiana in the United States. They write mostly romantic and contemporary stories, LGBTQ, all of them, and they're stunning and amazing, and we are going to talk about the three of them in this video. To spice things up a little bit, I'm going to rank them from my least favorite to my favorite. Even though there are only three books, and I love them all a lot, uh, I'm going to rank them from the one I enjoy the least to the one I'm really, really obsessed with. I'm actually obsessed with the three of them, but in different scales. So imagine they're all like B plus and above. So without further ado, let's start with today's video, shall we? Let's go. So in third place, the bronze goes to One Last Stop. And you will be like, but hey, you recommended this book in your Pride video. Why are you ranking this book third when there's other two that are better? I explained my reason in that video, and also I haven't read one of the other books before that. So that's why. And if I can turn back time, I will put the other book in that video. But, you know, it's Casey McWiston, so it's awesome, nevertheless. One Last Stop follows the story of August, she's 23 years old and recently moved to New York. She has this heavy load, this huge family story that she wants Skynet to leave behind her, even though the past is always coming back for sure. And then she moves to this apartment in New York City with a lot of roommates that they're amazing. Those three characters are my favorite characters of the whole book. Uh, this book, the best part of this book, it's mainly, it's side characters. They're so awesome, so rich, and so queer that I love them. <laughs> and while she studies in college, she's working in this place. It's Pancake Bill's Pancake House of Pancakes <laughs> place. <laughs> Actually, it's Pancake Billy's House of Pancakes. Yeah, that's it. And the main story revolves around that Every single time that August takes the Q train to college, she's always meeting this girl, Jane, in the train, and she's really attracted to her, and there's something weird or not that she cannot explain, but she's really into her. But there's an issue. Jane cannot leave the train. And that's all I'm going to say. You will see it by yourself. I'm not going to spoil the story for you, but it's an amazing story. It's filled with great characters. My main issue mostly with this story is that I couldn't connect with August as much as with the other main characters, but I think that they are both amazing, but amazing leads. I love women love women's stories. I think this is a great one. And also there's drag queens, there's trans people, there's a lot of representation that I love. So don't doubt to check it out this book. Having said that, I'm going to give one last stop four stars out of five because it's amazing, even though it's in third place, which is fine in this book because there's only three books. <laughs> okay, now in second place, the silver medal goes to... This one was a tough one, to be, to be completely honest, because one book I was really obsessed with, but the other one I think is even better. <laughs> I was torn between these two books because they're amazing, but I have to pick one. So, the second place goes to I Kiss Shara Wheeler. I love this book even more than I thought. This book is amazing, it's a great young adult story. This is the only young adult story out of the three. I think it's perfectly executed and it's a very compelling story that you're always trying to figure out what's going on. And it's so easy to connect with the main character, at least for me. And not to forget the huge cast of queer and LGBTQ characters. And I think that the most important part of this book is that how your religious background and attending to a religious high school and this small town thing that it's always like, telling you how to behave and you have to fit in this box and you have no other choices in your life 
I think that all these coming of age stories of people discovering their own queerness inside them, how they feel and how they want to express themselves, I think that this book shows this perfectly. The main plot goes around Shara Wheeler, she's missing, she's the most popular, amazing, cute, smart girl in town and she leaves three letters to three different persons in high school. One of them is her boyfriend, the other one is her neighbor and the other one is our main character Chloe, an out bisexual person who is very intense, you know, but in a positive way, in my opinion at least. So we're unveiling this mystery with the three characters that I just mentioned and we get to discover what happened with Shara, what's going on with Shara, but also how this helps them to discover themselves, which is amazing. When you think about this book, think about Paper Town meets Red, White and Royal Blue meets, uh, I think, But I'm a Cheerleader or that kind of stories. So I adore this book. I cannot talk more about this book because it's going to be spoiler territory. But if you can give it a go, do it. Don't be like me that I was like, oh, I will read it afterwards. It's, it's okay. Nothing will dethrone the other Casey McQuiston books, but it did. I'm going to give I kiss Shara Wheeler, 4 stars, 0.5 out of 5, it's an almost perfect book, I cannot give it more because I give more to the next book, but I think that this one is a must read of 2022 for sure, and it's one of my favorite books of this year. So, to no one's surprise, the first place goes to Red, White and Royal Blue. I think that the most important thing about this book is that it started it all and it's a phenomenon, it's going to have its own movie adaptation, we already have the cast announced, so I'm really really excited to watch this movie, but first you need to read the book. The main plot goes around Alex Claremont Diaz, he's the first son of the United States because his mother won the election so she's now the president. And then we get to know about his rivalry with Prince Henry and then it turns into a sort of friendship, something's going on and I'm not going to talk more about that but it, this is an amazing book. This is the ultimate LGBTQ contemporary story. Being very used to read young adult queer stories that I adored, especially romantic ones, I find this very charming because for the first time we have an amazing and well-realized romantic man loves man story and I think that their dynamic is perfectly executed in this book not only because they turn from enemies to friends but then to lovers and also there's a plethora of amazing side characters and fabulous scenes and there's a lot of conversations about coming out about figuring out who you are and I think that Alex is an amazing main character Chloe kind of reminds me of Alex in a way they're both like dramatic and uh, like very loud and a lot sometimes but I think that their personalities are amazing and they make an amazing main character because of their personality the story flows and then you get more interested in what's going on and it's very fast-paced and I love that. So there's not a lot about Red Wine and Royal Blue that hasn't already been discussed but I can say that this book is almost perfect. It's such a compelling love story and also all the struggles of tradition, of public eye, of being queer, I mean a position of power. And even though sometimes it's a little bit optimistic, it shows you how these two things sometimes don't coexist and you have to choose one or the other, when in reality you can be both. You can be an empowered queer person, you can be in a position of power, you can have political responsibilities because it doesn't matter who you love or who you are, what matters is your actions and what you do with your platform. So I think that this story is amazing and it's very very encouraging. So having said that, I'm going to give Red, White and Royal Blue 5 stars out of 5. I think it, it sells in its genre. I think that this book is the ultimate LGBTQ romance novel. I love it so much and I hope you guys can enjoy it too if you haven't. But if you did, what do you think about this book and what do you think about the movie adaptation? 
At first, I was a little bit skeptical because I don't know how they can translate the greatness of the book into a movie without like flopping in a way. You know, there's this like constant when people try to adapt these Roman stories into movies and they turn to be like basic or not as good as like the book is. So I'm a little bit worried about it. But at the end, I have to trust that Casey they are involved in the project, so I think that their vision and perspective will be taken into consideration when filming and also when editing and stuff and the whole process. And also at first I was skeptical about the casting. I was like, oh, this is Henry, oh, this is Alex. But then I saw them interact in social media, being together, and I think now, yeah, now I see it. Now I'm rooting for them. <laughs> so this is my ranking of the three Casey McQuiston novels that have been published. They're one of my favorite current authors, uh, at least when it comes to contemporary LGBTQ stories. And I would love to hear your thoughts down below. And what's your ranking? Do you agree with me? There's something you will change in here? Or tell me if you didn't like these books and why. I would love to read about that. And stay tuned because next week comes a really weird new video because I'm going to do something I don't want to do, so you will love it. <laughs> so thank you so, so much for being here. Please like down below and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys the next time.